everybody. Uh, it's great to be here. Great talk so far. Um, so uh, very quick, my name is Lucas and uh, I work at Sentry. So in a nutshell, Sentry um, captures um, errors that happen on your users' devices and it sends it basically to um, us and we tell you all about how this error happened, why it happened and where it occurred and stuff like that. So yeah, today though, I'm not really here to talk about Sentry or to pitch it. Um, we can do this at the booth later on. Uh, today I want to talk to you about view components and how tracking and an analyzing our component lifecycle um, helps us basically uh, get better insights into our performance of, the, of, of our apps and yeah, overall we'll make our users hopefully happier when we fix those performance problems. So let's get started with a fact which I think we hopefully can all agree on. We had a great talk before on uh, performance in view. So performance obviously is important, right? Um, we want our apps to be snappy, to be quick to be loaded quickly and well if our apps are not loaded quickly well we might get something like this or maybe something like this or maybe even something like this and it might be on a subconscious level but our users they care about performance and if it's just not there they're not going to be happy right so we don't want this to happen so well what can we do about this and the first thing that comes to our mind is obviously we should kind of establish a baseline, right? We should measure how our apps currently perform. And well, how can we do this? So the good news is to get started on this, um, it's very simple. We've seen this before. Um, we can basically just go into our um, dev tools in Chrome um, to the performance tabs and there we're gonna see web vitals. So web vitals, or again, we've seen it before, um, they are basically a set of standardized metrics, right? So we can, we have something, some stuff for loading, we have some stuff for measuring um, interactivity, and also for measuring uh, visual stability or layout shift, right? And they're great, and they provide us a nice baseline of um, how our app is performing. But let's talk quickly about LCP for a second, because it shows us very well that um, there are certain limitations to web battles. So many of those, they're kind of based on heuristics, right? Um, LCP, for example, we have to guess what is our biggest component uh, or our biggest element on the page. And maybe our browser gets this wrong. Maybe, for example, it mistakes our hero image or um, banner and uh, kind of uh, uses this, but what's actually much more important is, I don't know, the menu bar below it or some other text. So um, yeah, it's basically like a heuristic. It can be wrong sometimes. Also, just LCP alone doesn't really provide us um, explanations as to why our page really got slow. We have to dig deeper for that. And ultimately, we have this discussion of lab versus field data. You know, when, we're, when you're testing um, the stuff in your browser, when you build your app, um, you might get different results than when you're using it on your user's devices. So overall, it would be great to also you know, get, to get more information that, come, that comes directly from our user's devices. So, well, how can we do better? Um, Component tracking is the answer to that. And we can leverage this as you, as you developers because, well, we have components, right? So uh, what do I mean by that? I think we all know the view component lifecycle. Um, you have these different stages that our component goes through when it's initialized, when it's mounted, when it's updated, or also then removed from the DOM. And we can leverage the hooks that um, are basically like um, provided to us and just uh, do some measurements. For example, we can measure the component initialization time. That is from the setup phase when our component is basically like uh, instantiated until it's mounted and therefore visible to the user in the DOM. So we can just measure the time and then we have basically component initialization time. Or we can do some update measurements like measuring update frequency or how long it takes to update stuff. And you know, for example, if your app, if your component gets updated a million times, then something might be wrong and we should kind of investigate that because this might imply a performance problem. And yeah, so. This is the idea, basically. Now the question is, how can we do that? And the first step, and this is just kind of a half step <laughs> to, uh, to all of this, is basically um, just uh, take a look at the browser DevTools again, and there we can see this long-running tasks breakdown. And for example, here in this picture, we see that our welcome item component, for some reason, took 600 milliseconds of continuous JavaScript evaluation time. And that's not great because that obviously blocks our UI and people can't really use the app in the time. So we should definitely do something about this. So yeah, that's the first step, but it's not really, um, it doesn't scale really well, right? So next step for that, we have to kind of take uh, our focus to our code. 
And we can kind of start doing it manually. We can just, for example, again, measure component initialization time and then log it to the console. Or better, send it to some server, collect it, right? But again, this brings up the issue of scaling because if you have hundreds, com hundreds of components and multiple pages and whatever, this isn't really going to scale well. So instrumentation is the answer to that. And well, surprise, surprise, Sentry does instrumentation. So uh, what does it mean? Well, we actually, we hook into your components. We do this via mix-ins and we do probably exactly like those measurements that I showed you before. Like for example, measuring, measuring um, the mounting time and, and yeah, until your component is visible or updating time. And we collect this basically in something that we call spans. Those are the red things you can see here. And we stack those on top of each other to get like um, what we call a transaction basically. And this gives us a lot of insight into the components and how, like for example, one component, again, this welcome component here, for example, um, influences the initialization time of all other components. And with that, you can quickly drill down into your apps and just um, get to see which component is causing a slow page load, for example, or slow initialization time. So yeah, I'm not saying you have to use Sentry. You can, of course. You can also just go into our GitHub. We're completely open source. Just copy our code, copy what we're doing, use any other tool. The main message here is um, get to know your components and just start profiting from uh, basically knowing what your components are doing. And yeah, with that, let's wrap this quickly up. Um, performance is important, we've seen this. Um, Web Vitals, they're a great first step into you know, getting the insets and tools like Lighthouse also are really nice to have those audits. But if you want to go the extra mile and if you want to leverage what, what Vue gives us, which is components, then let's just track those components, do it automatically. We get more insets, better answers, and tailored views into the performance of our Vue apps. And yeah, that's basically it. Very much, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to talk about it a little more, see, see you at our booth. Happy to talk about it. And yeah, thanks for having me. We've got time for a couple quick questions. So if anybody has one for Lucas, please raise your hand. Anyone? Anyone? There we go. All right, since you guys both raised your hand at the same time, you have to answer your or ask your question at the same time. So do you guys have some sort of dashboard in which we collect this information and then we can do further analysis? Yes, great question. Yeah, we do have um, dashboards. We have a performance tab. So Sentry doesn't only do error monitoring, but also performance monitoring. So you can basically like go in, start with your baseline and then do some improvements and you can see how you know your initialization time or also like your web models, we do this as well, how, this, how these scores kind of um, evolve over time and get more insights on that. Um, hey, uh, so obviously we want to do this in production to get useful data. Yeah. So what's the overhead of hooking into all the updates and tracing that and collecting the data? Well, um, I can't lie, right? There is going to be some overhead involved in this. But overall, um, it depends really on your, on your application. Like we try at Sentry to minimize this overhead as, as, as much as we can, but we have gotten some reports stating that, you know, when people um, basically instrument every single component on a page and there's like loads of components, then things are just, are just going to get a little slower. So what we do is basically we kind of encourage our users to just instrument those components again that they think are important and we can very well um, set this level of granularity basically in our um, settings. All right, well, let's give it up for Lucas real quick. Thanks. <laughs>